Well, morning everyone. A very warm welcome. And yes, in the background, we are back at Marquis Motones in Tewkesbury. A uh, memorable day a couple of years ago when we uh, travelled here to collect our uh, mobile Vesta K Yacht 79. Uh, A-class motorhome, which is uh, a 7.44 metre A-class motorhome. Fantastic memories, very exciting day it was. Um, but they've got one or two new k yachts in here and a couple of Benimar Tesoros. And we've had quite a few questions about our k Yacht 79 in terms of layout, why we chose what we chose. Um, and there's a bit more detail on that on the channel. So do uh, check out some of the films uh, on our channel, which look at our 79 in detail. Um, but to help answer some of those questions, I thought we'd come back to Marquis Motorhomes at Tewkesbury and show you in detail some of the some of the other Mobile Vetta models. Um, so, without further ado, let's get back into the dealership and show you the first of today's uh, vehicle. Do check across the channel for the films that um, that we're going to bring you from here. Um, and therefore, without further ado, we're going to dive into one of the Mobile Vettas um, and start to show you around some of these fantastic motorhomes uh, here at Tewkesbury. So this is the k Yacht 80. Very similar in looks, of course, to the 86. Look out on the channel for the film of the 86 as well, top to bottom, inside and out. But this film is going to look at the uh, k Yacht 80. Again, obviously an A-class Mobile Vetta, Techno Line. This again is a brand new 2023 vehicle and, um, uh, and is available here at uh, Marquis Motorhomes. We're in Tewkesbury in Gloucester. And this one, slightly less than the uh, 86, if you've seen that film already, this one at 110995, 110,995. And again, it's the 4.4 tonne chassis, so of course a C1 license, but, um, but it does have that incredible uh, over 1,000 kilogram payload, so around about 1,016 kilograms of payload, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, if you want to know a bit more detail about payload um, on either of the vehicles, um, I did a film from a Waybridge where we sort of loaded our van right up and took it to a Waybridge um, and uh, sort of basically found out exactly what it would weigh if we were down in the darkest Europe. Uh, with all of our kit and equipment on board and uh, it was a, a very interesting process um, and some quite surprising results as well on our 4.4 tonne which is a 2021 k Yacht 79 so do check out the channel for that as well and of course plenty more plenty more films from uh, both technical but also from all of our travels around Europe in the last couple of years have been absolutely fantastic but let's have a wander around the outside of this and look at some of the spaces on this chaos 80 um, we've got some storage here just clips into those little clips on the side there a little bit of storage in the locker there there is your fresh water intake there um, and then immediately next to that is the entrance to your toilet cassette how you get round it to empty it, a little blue catch under there, it's just a case of lifting that up and uh, taking the cassette out. And once the thing is out then, you've got a sort of integral handle, handle there. You can see it, it folds up the handle. If I just try and, there we go. Handle lifts up, so it's a bit like going on holiday with your, uh, with your airline baggage on wheels. Um, do though, unlike this one, do make sure you've got the lid on the tube there when you go for a walk with it otherwise you'll get very damp feet which wouldn't be very pleasant <laughs> but uh, but um and then once you've uh, once you've emptied it emptied it out it's just a case of sliding it back in there and making sure that uh, that little blue clip clicks into place simple as that obviously the uh, cuz it's brand new the lids off this one that's where you would uh, turn this sideways in order to empty it whilst just pressing the little blue button at the back there which allows the air to follow it in and allows you to empty it. Um, as simple as that. So that's the uh, easy access cassette and then next to it you've got your LPG locker. Um, a definite two six kilo propanes you'd fit in here. See it's very well vented and a good, a good steel storage space. Um, it may well be, and um, if you've seen my other films, you'll know that we run with a 13 kilo and a six kilo, when I'm, particularly when I'm in Europe. 
um, and we can fit both of those in. Um, just not quite sure on this one. It looks pretty big, but uh, you'd have to sort of do a bit of uh, perhaps go down your gas supplier and try physically fitting in um, a, uh, a 13K and or a 6K there to see if you could carry that much in this particular model, the Chaos 80. Um, but certainly in our 79, that's achievable. Two sixes easily, possibly a six and a 13. Um, there's your exhaust for your, uh, for your Alde wet heating system. Um, and we'll see the first bit of that heating system in the space at the back here. Now you'll see um, that obviously the garage doors are already, you'll notice that it's a very different sort of configuration and they're smaller and that's because above us here you've got the L-shaped lounge um, as opposed to the 86 on this side which had obviously those twin beds which are sort of raised up. So you've lost a bit of um, garage space here. Um, it was one reason why we chose our 79 was because we were able to fit our electric bikes in the rear space there but obviously if you've not got those issues or indeed if your bikes are on the back here because you can see here you've got Fiamma brackets ready to take the Fiamma bike carrier and that's something obviously to talk to the team here at Marquis about is to get those extras fitted which they do very well here um, but there that would be the alternative storage space for your bikes um, which then leaves you space here for, which is pretty big, I have to say, because of course it's the full width, the full width of the motorhome. So it goes right the way, right the way to the other side there, little door at the other side there. Um, so plenty of space in here. You just haven't got that height, perhaps, unless you've got one of those fabulous fold up, fold up bikes that allow you to tuck them away. Then uh, you would, of course, would probably get those in here. Um, brand new motorhome, look, lovely new carpet. All your bits of carpet, your ladders for the beds, all squeaky clean, ready to go. Is it going to be you who owns this? Um, this box here is, um, is the uh, spare wheel setup, or the tools to change your wheel. Standard stuff you'd expect in there, the wheel braces, the jack, the towing, towing eye there. Um, for those of you that know Fiat's will know that normally it would be stowed under the front passenger seat but some of the components of the Aldi heating system have been put under the front passenger seat. So it's meant that this is now um, a sort of box without a space in effect, because that fitting there is what would normally go into the floor under the passenger seat. Um, so uh, it's quite a weight of tools, but it just means that you've got to uh, take up a little bit of space in your garage here, carrying that with you. Um, hidden away as well here is, your, um, is the all important reset button for your heating system, we'll see the heater it's, or the boiler itself behind here when we go inside, but, um, but this is the all important uh, trip switch. And if I just turn this switch, when the temperature outside your motorhome gets to sort of less than minus, uh, gets to less than four degrees, then the hot water system starts worrying that it's going to freeze up and therefore it's got a fail safe device where when it gets to that temperature, watch this little button here, it does that and you can actually hear the water starting to drop out under there. And that's exactly what it does. It drops the water out of the pipes, so there's no danger. So let me just, while we're chatting, let me just reset that for you, Let's see. So it just turns it back to that way and then press that button in there and that's now reset it and you can hear the water has actually stopped. So uh, as I say, when it goes to less than four degrees, um, that automatically activates. So you can't um, stop it doing that. It's a, it protects the pipework in there. And uh, if you wake up in the morning and after a cold night and find that your heating or hot water is not working, or indeed more especially, your water is completely empty, it may be that it's opened its valve the valve, the heating system has tried to refill itself from the fresh water, but because the valve has been tripped and it's open, then anything that it refills immediately goes out through the bottom of your van. So first thing to do is come into the garage here, see if the button's out. If it is, reset the top switch there, press that back in. Um, so that's the first bit of your heating system. Um, and if we go around the back here, Pass your fittings for the bike rack, you'll see up there as well, you've got um, a dual aspect camera. Um, used to be just a single camera lens put on there, but now they're putting two on, one of which is looking straight down at your rear bumper here, so you can get literally millimetre perfect up to whatever wall or fence you're reversing towards. 
Um, and uh, the other one obviously gives you a bit of a bit more of a view of what's behind you. But that, together with those huge, great sort of coach-style mirrors at the front there on the off side and the near side, electrically controlled, uh, give you fantastic view all around the van. It is surprisingly easy to sort of manoeuvre and uh, and to reverse. Um, as we go around, then there's the other entrance that we saw saw from the other side, and you can see here that we've got a little light here. A three pin socket, dead handy for, you know, if you're using external items, um, be it uh, we use one to blow up our inflatable kayak, um, so you sort of have some external power there. And this is um, an external shower point and they'll supply you with a tube that just pushes in and clicks and you'll see that it's actually hot and cold as well. So fantastic. So great if you're coming in, rinsing off bikes, dogs, people, um, kayaks of course, <laughs> you name it. If you want to give them a rinse off before they go back in your van, then that's the perfect way to do it. So that's your garage space. You see there's two ladders here um, well, for each of the beds that are in there, which you'll see once we get inside. Nice decals though on the vehicles. Nicely done that sort of contemporary grey colour and of course because this is the L-shaped lounge then you've got stacks of, uh, you've got these extra windows, extra window at the back. The 86 obviously there, as you'll remember, hasn't got any window on the back so you get that extra window here. Um, yes you lose a bit of garage space but you've got that extra space and then a drop down bed which you'll see inside. So it's all sort of, you know, it's a matter of getting in and out of them getting the feel of it, messing about with them at your showroom. Mark is here, are very accommodating when it comes to that. Um, they'll open them up, let you have a mess around with it and work out, you know, what's the best and most suitable setup for you when you're going to part with a fair few pounds. Um, up at the front here, you've got another little storage space. There we go. Um, just to the right there, that's your diesel filler and also just behind the cap there is your, um, if we just pop that, whoops, pop that open, get the right key would help. There we go. So there's your lockable diesel cap and uh, then your ad blue. A bit fiddly sometimes filling ad blue. It's a very narrow pipe so you've got to make sure that your filler which normally you buy with the ad 10 litre ad blue cans, make sure it's got a really long spout because there's a little um, a little sort of um, flap further down the tube there, which if you don't push it all the way in, won't open and you'll get it all over your feet. Which, uh, not saying I've been there, but I might have been at least once. Add blue on your feet. Not sure it does any good to your feet, but there we go. Um, there's your hookup point, and finally on the outside here, you've got your external barbecue point quick release uh, fixture supplied so it's a matter of fitting that onto the hose from your barbecue um, uh, clipping it on tightening it down and then it simply pushes into that and clicks into place and uh, and there you've got to turn that 90 degrees to switch your gas on so really fast once you've got it set up it's uh, it's a very quick release right so let's have a look inside now um, you'll see on the door itself as well it's got an integral Bin. I think most, probably every motorhome on the planet, I reckon, has got an integral bin. It's also got its blackout blind that comes up over your window there. Um, it's uh, central locking that's controlled off the, the main uh, key of the van. Obviously, the locker spaces aren't controlled from the uh, from the central locking, so you've got to individually lock those. Um, but you can see the lights are. We've got the lights on in here, but you can see if I just switch them on and off there, you can see where all the little lighting bits come on there um, which are really nice sort of recessed LED lights around some of the detailing as well you've got the blue recessed LED strips that's very nice so one thing which we love about our 79 um, which gosh can't believe it's almost two years to the month that we came here to pick it up um, one thing which we love about it is uh, at uh, in the evenings when you've got that sort of uh, the recessed strip lighting in ours is dimmable as well, so it gives a really nice effect and a really lovely uh, mood lighting that you get uh, for evening lounging about in your in your van. Okay, so let's have a uh, let's have a wander through the uh, the van itself. We'll start up at the front there, um, with not only of course the cab space but also 
the first of the double beds which is hiding up there. You can see um, these big sort of um, nicely nicely padded seats, mobile VETA emblem etched into them, uh, adjustable obviously um, forward and back and up and down and with the lever that's just down there you've got the ability then to turn them around so that they're rear facing to join that sort of dining space just behind us there. But of course, remember the advantage of this one is you've actually got two dining spaces. So uh, you've got this table here at the front, but you've also got your L-shaped lounge at the back, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Um, the 2023 models are obviously Fiat chassis based. As I say, they're 4.4 tonnes. Gives you that amazing um, more than a ton payload. Um, but what the 2023 also does is um, it's got a slightly more upgraded, upgraded. That's uh, not quite the word. Update, updated Fiat dashboard. Um, ours has still got a lot of the orange display, which has actually been on Fiat's for decades on there. Um, but I guess if it don't, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, sort of thing. But they have uh, started to move into the more modern age. Which, when I turn on the ignition here, you'll see it's got a, a, a sort of a bit more um, sharper display, a bit clearer white light. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a clearer display. Um, not quite your full virtual cockpit, but uh, but yeah, def definitely a bit more, a bit more. Let's just try and get a bit closer so you can get the light there a bit better. It's got that bit more contemporary display now, as have some of these. They've still got the accent stereo that you may have seen if you've watched the film of uh, of our van, um, which is a little bit laggy. Um, but I have to say the sat nav in it, I've kept it updated and it does work pretty well. The sat nav because it knows the, uh, that obviously you're a larger vehicle and a heavier vehicle, so you can set it to deal with that. And all around Europe, it's been pretty good, so I won't diss it, because yes, it's a bit laggy, but actually, the sat has been pretty good. Uh, but I've seen people that have t uh, swapped them out, put a new system in, put a system in that's uh, bigger than this space, so it sits out a bit more. Um, so lots of, you know, different options there, if you wanted to change that. Um, heating and other air conditioning controls there. Uh, it's a nine speed automatic. All the mobile vetters now are this nine speed automatic, um, which is good. It's got an eco mode as well, and it's a sort of normal mode. So you've got various options to choose from. We've done about 16,000 miles in ours now um, with the same engine and um, even towing. Uh, we're towing now a little scooter on the back of our. K yacht 79 and even with that on I'm still getting over 27 over the whole of that mileage just over 27 mpg which isn't too bad at all um, obviously 12 volt cigarette lighter style things USB USB C plugs as well you see there um, storage down the bottom there plenty of storage around your um, around your door and glove pockets there um, at the back there you've got more um, another socket there USB as well, um, so they've had one or two more USB sockets, storage underneath the steering wheel there, steering wheel is obviously adjustable from underneath there, all the controls you'd expect to find on your steering wheel for your phone and volumes and stereo and um, cruise control and that sort of thing. Um, you've also got this little thing here which you actually, there's no catch to it, you just grab hold of this bit, just pull it up, that pops up into place there and then there's a lever just at the side here which you just pull that lever out it releases these two and you can slot your mobile phone into there or your tablet because it opens much wider and uh, so if you're using your phone or your tablet to uh, sat nav as well then you can stick it up on the top there um, once you've put that lever in you can then click these back into place and this then is spring loaded just like a clipboard so you could perhaps put a macbook up there or documents or routes or whatever you want to um, lots of space because it's the a class you get that lovely full windscreen which uh, again it's another thing which i really like about ours um probably even more so than this one this one has got these sort of slightly bigger door pillars than no a pillars than uh, than ours has but either way the um the a class screen at the front here all this glass does give you an absolutely fantastic view particularly when you're pottering through the alps like we were a few weeks ago absolutely lovely and you can see that obviously really good really good view of those massive mirrors as well um, on the sides here you've got integral blinds that just slide across on their own channels there and then these ones just clip out of there you can see down here there's a magnetic strip so you just move it back towards the 
corresponding magnetic strip there. Simple as that. No catches, no nothing, and just pushes away from there. Clips back into. There we go. Um, the front screen is already down a little bit. It's normally higher than that. Um, so you just pinch together those two and bring it down. Obviously, all the way down gives you total blackout. Um, and then to take it back up again, pinch together, and we'll just push this one up a bit further. There we go, so it just clicks into place then. And then you've got your sun blind, which is slightly different to the car one. And you just pull this one down here. And there's a sort of full width giant sun blind, which you then put back up by just pulling this and it's sort of gas loaded. It finds its, finds its own way back up there without dropping out part of the price. I've just saved you some money now. Get to Mark's, get to Marcus quick. I've just taken 900 pounds off it. Okay, um, over the other side here, um, you've got your standard sort of storage in here, glove box, but you've also got a little cubby up there and you've got some uh, leads here which allow you to plug in a flash drive, update the stereo system with uh, up-to-date mapping and stuff like that. So that's what those leads are for. Or indeed to run, of course, music through the... Uh, through to the stereo there. Um, over the near side here you've got, similarly you've got another blind which comes all the way across here and slots into this magnetic strip. And then this with this nice um, inlaid LED blue lighting just uh, is a simple press, pops open and you'll see in there we've got our first of our number of Aldi heaters. Um, we've also got this funny thing here which is the uh, sort of bleed system for the radiators themselves. Uh, but good storage down there for map books and the like and whatever whatever else drinks holders there and down below there under your feet here these little things are sort of quarter turns under there is the uh, engine battery or the main sort of chassis battery um, as opposed to your habitation battery which is obviously under the seat over there um, here's that spot i mentioned where you've got your you can see you've got the Aldi heating uh, appliance under there, another radiator. That's where, that's where previously your um, spare wheel tools would have been, hiding away under the seat there. But um, but they've obviously put some heating stuff in there. So um, so that's why there's that trade-off with the tools now in the uh, in the garage space we saw at the back. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll drop these seats forward, these main seats forward, because to let us have a look at the uh, bed, which is up above us, we just need these seats in the down position. Right, so, and it's lovely detail on this as well, and some of this uh, inset lighting as well, a sort of faux leather type finish, with this diamond patterning on it. And then this is just held in place by this sort of little seat belt type attachment with a clip there that's right up on the roof. That holds it in place when you're underway. Um, it's on gas struts, so it's a case of grabbing hold of it and just pulling it gently down but keeping hold of it so it doesn't suddenly shoot forward and uh, and damage the mechanism so keep it under control when you bring it down and there you go there's that uh, really good double bed space um, just try and give you a yeah so 1.938 and then this way going across to the other side there about 1.275 so really good size double um, and uh, we've just added you can see it's got a, a pretty good mattress on this already some good slats under there um, pretty good mattress already but we've just added a sort of 70 odd mil memory foam topper to it um, which still allows you to put the thing into the up position without interfering with this catch at all um, but it just uh, makes it an even more comfortable space which is actually really nice then and you can see tucked away under here this mesh that funny mesh that's lying there that actually comes out from under there and it comes up and it clips into these hooks there and i guess it's probably for um perhaps for younger people that you don't want to roll out of bed if that's who it's been used by um, and there's also one of the ladders that we saw in the garage there can fit onto the edge of this and can provide you with ladder access up onto the bed space um, but you can see just like our 79 there's a seat just here which with a foot on there and a, and a and a knee up there you can actually get onto that bed space pretty easily without the ladder um, so you've got a choice of a choice of how you do it there um, if we move this 
seat cushion out of the way. There we go. We'll pop this one back up. So again, gas strut, so it helps you bring it up. But, but again, you can hear the gas strut working there. So I've actually let go of it now and you can see it's still moving very slightly. So a good, really good gas strut that. And then when you're underway, just clip it into position with that sort of seat belt attachment. Um, so once that cushion is off, you'll see under here, there's all the, uh, some of the brains of the uh, habitation area. You've got your habitation battery there, which as you can see um, is a, a big 95 amp, amp hour um, AGM battery, um, together with its charging unit and together with some of the fuses that look after the systems in and around the van. So that's one place to look. If you get any fuse issues, that's one place to look. Um, there are, uh, there are, there's another few pots in the van, which I'll show you in a sec, um, which will be the other place to go should you uh, trip any of the circuits whilst you're on site. Um, there's also, of course, you've got a possibility of swapping things out. Lithium now is a, is a, um, is a favourite sort of source of power as well. Um, we did a project recently on our van, uh, which is on the channels, about three films, where um, where I upgraded the solar. The final part of that equation will be me swapping from an AGM battery to a lithium battery, which I haven't done yet. Uh, but as we go around the van, I'll show you the existing solar and then um, what we did to change it. As I say, there's two or three films on the channel about that change. We did it as a DIY project, so um, do check out the channel if you want to know a bit more about the solar and uh, perhaps how to up upgrade and uprate it. OK, so what we'll do is we'll get these cushions out of the way so you can see what's under those um, and get these two put back on there. And you can see under here, you've got a little clip there. Um, and that, when you grab hold of that clip, it allows this table to move around in all directions front back and sideways so once your two front seats are rotated around uh, and if you're also using your little l-shaped seats there then you've got that ability to move the table to exactly where you want it to suit and obviously when it's slid right out you've now brought this uh, seat into play as well so you can quite comfortably seat what one two three, four, five, probably seat uh, an easy five, even six around this, uh, around that little dining table, let alone the extra space at the back. So fantastic for large groups. Uh, okay, let's have these cushions up. Um, you can see as well that unlike the 86, this one has got this double bench seat here, which is already facing forward. So under here, you've got your seat belt positions for those extra two passengers and this, little piece of bench cushion there that if you look under there you can see that underneath there is like a void and that's because that section of cushion comes out uh, so that if you're using both of these seats forward facing then you've got that extra leg room or knee room I should say because that cushion comes off and the, the flap of wood that it sits on folds down a bit like the 86 we saw where uh, it creates a little ledge for the cushion so that's what that is. There we go, that's with the uh, cushion off and you can see this piece then, actually just the whole piece just slides out. Um, so you just slide that out of the way, stow it if you're in passenger mode and, uh, and then just slide it back in when you're ready to replace the cushion. So with the bench cushion out of the way, you've got two little entrances here. That is just uh, all you're looking at there is, uh, you can hear, is the top of your fresh water tank, 120 litres very similar to all the Mobile Vetter range. And then if we take that one off, there you go, is the, our freshwater uh, access into the tank itself. Um, this one again has got a slightly different setting on it. I think I've probably, there's about three different settings on three different vans. Um, in that to empty this one completely, you take off your inspection hatch there. And then inside, you can just see these levers. There's two, just see two levers in there, second one down there. And, um, those are for uh, the first lever, which is slightly higher. That's for emptying, of course, down to, say, 20-odd litres, perhaps, of water, of emptying it out if you're carrying a lot and you're about to hit the road and don't want so much weight. You can take it down to minimum water. And then, of course, if you wanted to drain everything out, the lower one down there is the way that you, um, that you drain down completely, perhaps when you're going into storage or 
or uh, when you're cleaning up um, and putting some sterilization tablets in there or whatever to clean out the system and of course sat there nice and easy to access is the water pump that runs the water um, around the whole of your van be it the shower be it the external shower internal shower sinks all that sort of thing so that's the magic water pump which has got its own uh, power switch up on the control panel which is um, just up behind us there above the door which we'll see in a sec right let's get this cushion back on immediately above that uh, bench seat you've got your uh, TV which is a slide out with this little lever here and then if you pull the lever towards you it also allows you to to hinge the unit out like that slides that back in and you can obviously talk to your dealer about uh, what type of TV you might want fitted they can do all that for you here at Marquis um, three pin power source there and obviously your aerial connections there uh, the cupboarding up above as well has got these little catches on there which keep it shut when you're underway so just to press on that little catch and it opens it up good storage space there nice finish as well that sort of gloss cream color the little mobile vetter design there and then this pretty again contemporary coloring a bit of a chrome inset as well and that lovely lighting at the top there really nicely finished and these light colors really keep the uh, van as a really light space and then up above us uh, on the roof um, it's got several roof lights um, but uh, they're all in a slightly similar way and that's just this little handle here and then you rotate it and up your window goes um, each of the windows small or large have both got integral blinds in them they've got one full blackout blind and then that fly screen there. Those are your blinds, each of those roof spaces, even the smaller ones there have got both those blinds fitted. Uh, this one here has obviously got a very slightly, there's not no winder as such, it's just to press this button in and then you can see the notches there give you an ability to set, set the window, set the window into one of those notches or indeed using this little lock piece you can lock it in position with that as well <coughs> but of course because we're in August in the UK then we better keep the window shut because you know what will probably come around the corner in the next hour or two no I'm being way too pessimistic about our fabulous English summers <laughs> okay uh, over this side then just above the door just above the hard door you've got your um, control panels uh, on the right here you've got a grey water tank heater a grey water tanks 100 litres so um, <clears throat> if there's any danger of it freezing overnight that's the last thing you want so there's an ability to heat the water some of them some of the K yachts don't have them R79 doesn't because the water tank itself is a, is above the suspended floor so it means that it's sort of got its own insulation protection by that method um, <clears throat> but where it hasn't then they provide you with that um, little water heater just to the left here we've got the uh, control panel just press the unlock there and you can see it you can slide it across you've got a setting screen you've got uh, the ability to connect to the iNet X that's uh, so that you can Bluetooth connect to this system using your smartphone uh, or tablet and control everything the heating and the water and everything from your phone rather than having to come up and do it from these two different controls um, <coughs> and where we access the switches from just then you can see I've got the interior lights working which is why we've got our LEDs on the outdoor light there that's an awning light which is just above the door that we're stood next to here nice big bright LED that and that obviously switches your water pump on that we've just seen under the under the floor uh, resources those are your uh, battery settings there um, giving us our habitation battery and your engine battery got a water indicator there as to whether it needs refilling or not um, you've got your climate there as well where you can set your habitation area temperature together with the water controls there um, there's your heating system here um, Audi controls from that obviously um, as well as from your phone you can set all the fan settings heat settings vent settings you name it um, and there's a comprehensive handover that they do here at Marquis to explain uh, how all your heating systems work and of course there's a gazillion resources on YouTube or similar that show you uh, that will show you how all these work and what the error codes are if you're ever unfortunate enough to get an error code flash up which generally you probably will get one or two flash up at you 
Um, so if you don't remember the handover, then there's plenty of resources out there as well as, of course, the instruction book. Um, just to the left of the door then, you've got these overhead lockers above the sort of galley kitchen. Um, and you'll see a nice bit of storage in there. And then just below us here, we've got that sink unit there, two little, two little uh, infills there that cover your, cover your sink up. Mixer tap there, and then your twin gas and one induction hob there. Um, and we found, in fact, even on some of the European sites, which have as low as 6 amp, obviously in the UK we're generally 16 amp plugs, uh, but as low as 6 amp on some of the sites in Europe, um, and indeed one or two in the UK, we found that the induction still worked on hookup, albeit uh, you wouldn't want too much more on as well as the induction, uh, but certainly it does work on something as low as 6 amp. And if you're unfortunate enough to, to perhaps pop a fuse, um, then that's one of the first places to look as well. If your connection from your hookup to the post that you're hooked to or plugged into, if uh, if everything stopped working electric wise, then have a check of your board there. See if any of those is uh, in the down position, and if they're all correct, then head off to the uh, what you're plugged into the post, and generally you'll find there's a similar switch on there, on the post which uh, which will be in the tripped position, and it's often just a case of. Uh, popping that switch back up. Uh, so obviously switching everything electric off you've got running to start with um, just so it doesn't pop again and then gradually reintroducing each of the items and hopefully you'll get a bit of stability off that but it's not an uncommon thing to happen uh, so don't be too alarmed if you uh, if everything does go off temporarily. Um, standard sort of position oven, grill in there, gas oven that one is um, and then a to the left of the oven you've got uh, this nice nice set of drawers, cutlery drawer there and a bit of extra space and some quite deep drawers that will take quite easily take your pans. Under here you've got this bottom one is your gas supply and all of these um, are of course for the different uh, the different items that you run gas on so be it the fridge, be it the cooker, be it the outdoor barbecue, be it the boiler you name it so you can individually isolate uh, gas appliances if you wanted to um, I've not actually, we've got the ability to do that but I've not done it uh, I just run with, um, with them all in the on position and just isolate from the gas locker itself onto the main bottle but that's what that's uh, that's what all those are for. Over the other side from the galley, you've got your um, hi guys. Uh, you've got your toilet space, and this is also one of those um, crazy uh, crazy shower units where it's a bit like being in a TARDIS, where this sink unit swings out to reveal the uh, shower. You can see the hook for where your shower hose will go. But uh, you uh, wouldn't be blamed for thinking where on earth is the actual shower itself. Well, it's hiding behind there and I'll show you how that works in a sec. Um, the toilet, that's that uh, access from the outside which we've seen already. Um, this whole thing rotates so you can position it to wherever is best. And then the little lever down at the side there, that obviously then activates the, or the flap that's on the cassette that we saw when we took out the cassette. That opens and closes it. There's your electric flush there. Um, but you can see obviously that there, that there certainly is a shower in here because you've got your drain holes there. Um, and there is in the garage, there was a bit of, uh, uh, which if I remember, which if I remember I'll show you um, when we get to it. In fact, just so I don't forget. Let me quickly show you that because there's a little infill which um, there we go. So that wooden in slatted infill there, that fits perfectly into your trace, your shower tray, so that you can have um, so you can have a nice finish in there, timber finish. Um, right. So let's open this up. As I say, a bit like a TARDIS. This, so you you uh, you can just sort of take hold of that. It's a magnet. It's a magnet clipping. So I'll just give it a little pull, and you can see this whole unit then starts to open back. It swings back over the toilet space and uh, back to there. So you can see now we've got our shower hose there, which you simply lift out, attach into here. Shower controls there and um, away you go. So if I 
and then here now I'm completely in you've got this slide across there we go magnetic slide across door which is obviously waterproof so now any water that's dropping goes straight down to your plugs but uh, and here as well you've got a little fold out screen so it's sort of there we go so it sort of makes it into like a a little shower cubicle that I'm now stood in window up above as well nicely lit plenty of light in here and then that folds away that folds away a little retaining clip there um, but uh, but obviously you need to be out through your slidey door and then this whole unit then just slides back there we go so that's your TARDIS shower, at least that's what I'm going to call it. Um, <laughs> the mirrors as well that you've seen and, uh, and this one is of course a storage cupboard as well. Quite a nice tall one that as well. Plenty to fit in there. There's, um, there's your Aldo wet heating system, so it's a sort of good towel rail, almost that. Um, with of course hooks for the towels just up at the top there. Okay, so that's your little bathroom space. And whereas on the 86 we saw that the sort of setup was the toilet one side and the shower the other side, that's how they uh, that's how they configure this one with everything in that one space opposite the galley. And on the right here, you've got your lovely big fridge, um, plenty of space in that. Pull out drawer at the bottom there. Got a freezer section up the top here, again, which has got quite a bit of space in there. Um, and up above it. There's a little cupboard here, which if we can get that open, there we go. A bit more storage up the top there. So now we're uh, just heading towards our back L-shaped lounge. Uh, on the left here, as we go towards that lounge, you've got your, there's your Alde wet heating system, pink color, because it's got a sort of antifreeze type additive in it. Uh, needs a little bit, fairly minimal maintenance every couple of years perhaps, getting it checked for the right amount of antifreeze etc. With your, uh, your dealer here at Marcus will obviously give you advice and guidance on that. Um, but also in the cupboard here, a few other bits and pieces, you've got your TV booster aerial there to both of the TVs in the van. Um, because the one at the front is also, as a second space, here we go, which pops up out of the unit there, that's your second TV. Um, You've got your solar controller there, that's what I touched on earlier, that's the PWM controller. We uprated ours to an MPPT, a bit more efficient. Uh, we tripled the amount of solar on the roof from 100 to about 350 watts, um, which was absolutely fantastic when we were down in France, um, <coughs> because of course you've got plenty of sun down there. So we were off grid for uh, about 10 days and uh, the solar just uh, kept us going absolutely beautifully. Um, Check out the channel for that, two or three films on there about the solar upgrade. And finally this, loosen off that collar at the top there, push up your aerial um, up to the maximum point which is there. And then this rotating bit at the end, that allows you to tip your aerial from the vertical at the top to that way to, to straight on through 90 degrees. Some of the signals you'll get here and there require the aerial to be turned like that. So and that's when you would use this bit at the bottom. Otherwise, it's just to push up and down and rotate this bit of the pole to merely uh, point the aerial at a different place. Um, really good app for that called Antenna Finder. There's one or two, in fact, on the market. But uh, I've used Antenna Finder since we got the van and um, I'll try and put a link to that down in the description. If you need uh, an app, you just fire it up. It tells you where to point the aerial uh, and the strongest signal. Uh, you can, of course, see as well, you've got a little access as your wardrobe as well with a, uh, with a hanging rail up the top there. So now we're into the back. We've got one of these super adjustable tables, which if I can find the clip, and the clips are just under here. So you drop these drop these clips down and that allows you then or well, that allows the table to move back and move back and forward like that um, and if you want it in its opened out position then it's just a case of grabbing hold of one end and the table pivots on its metal top so if we just pop that clip back up that stops this piece moving back and forward as you can see and then we can just lift out this 
table like that. So it's a really good sized table that for your um, L-shaped seating here. And then it just slides back in like that, clips back into place. Um, and then the controls, because you can see it's got a sort of concertina underneath. We've got here, we've got the, got the that's where you can lower it down to have the table set at whichever height you prefer. Um, you can see as well, of course, we've got the bed space up above us as well, but the bed obviously, because it's got the cupboards fitted to the underside of it, that can only come down as far as this. Um, but you can adjust this to whether you want it as a sort of coffee style table or perhaps as a dining table or whatever with that electric control. Fantastic. It's like being a starship, isn't it? So that's it in its fully up position again. And then while we're down here, we've got a uh, little bit of storage space in there. And then we've got this cupboarding space here. Open that up. There you can see in there, you've got your three point pin, uh, three pin socket in there. TV power, 12 volt power as well there. Most of the TVs will be 12 volt. Little space under the floor there, that sort of access to some of the piping and uh, cabling and things like that. It's just a sort of maintenance access, not for any more storage. So those are the little cupboards. And of course, when your TV is in the slid down position, then it obviously drops down into that, into that void. So let's see if we can get the TV put down and um, see if we can get the bed down for you. There we go, and that's served by uh, some quite powerful gas struts, that. So again, it's a bit like the bed, if you're bringing it up or putting it down, then keep hold of it, keep it under control, because at one point the gas strut takes over and it's quite a, quite a ferocious gas strut, that. Um, see the little reading lights there, but obviously you'll get a better effect of that when we're in the bed down position. So that's got controls on here, um, and it's a case of just bringing it down like that. see there the tables are coming lower that's at its lowest position there so you can still there's, there's still room there to uh there's still plenty of room so your covers don't impact onto the work surface there and or of course if you want to leave any bits on the side there as long as they're lower than that point um, but one of those ladders then we saw in the garage clips over to the side of the uh, bed here at any point along the along this bit here along this edge and um, there's your second double bed space. You can see how, of course, the mechanism works with things a bit like seat belts in each, uh, each corner. Um, and once it's down, you can see you've got an additional light there, reading light type thing. Um, again, you'd be, uh, you'd be uh, sleeping crossways. Um, storage dockets up at the back there, cubby holes for whatever it may be, a little bit of storage on the back shelf there, charging phones and the, and the like at night. Um, but size wise again a good size sort of uh, double bed let me just grab the measurer and we'll confirm the size of that for you so from the uh, yeah 1.4 across there and then uh, let's just try and get you a reading on the full width of it and yeah, just over two meters, 2.004, which is the length of uh, from the back of the mattress there to the uh, to the meshing just on the end there. So again, really good sized double. And again, if you wanted it, if you wanted to supplement the mattress a bit, you could uh, add a add a little topper to that without compromising its uh, its ability to lift there. Okay, let's take that bit back up. There we go, back into position. Um, overhead lockers there. Aircraft style, again clip shut. Similar ones this side. There's those little cubbies up there. Plenty of space to hide a few more bits and pieces and these little 
reading lights as well. Speakers at the rear there, which are fed from the uh, van stereo system on the front dashboard. And there's the addition of that, um, of those lovely, of that extra window um, at the back there, together with these lovely big long side windows. So you get stacks of light in the van here at the back. Um, all of the side windows have got a similar sort of process. They've all got these catches where you press this little button here, which allows you to lift the catch. Um, do all four of them here and then gas struts each side which when you get to a certain point the gas strut just allows it to stay open. Um, all of them as well, all of the side windows have two sets of blinds. They've got your um, fly screen blind there that comes down from the top or by pinching these two together and bringing up you've got your blackout blinds as well. Those are obviously the guide tracks for where the bed slides up and down. And last but by no means least, let's just have a quick look under these cushions. And it's just this one that's got uh, a hatch underneath it. Um, and if we lift that one up, you'll see, there it is. In all its finery, the Aldi boiler does all the magic, keeps you water hot, keeps you toasty warm in winter. And there, down the bottom there, you can just, just see with the blue switch on the top there, that's that one we were looking at in the garage that uh, that will um, pop open when the temperature gets too cold. So if you've ever got no water, straight down, check that blue switch. Um, nothing under this one, as I say. Um, and let's just get those cushions back on and we're almost done in the KY80 Technoline. So that was the KY80 L-shaped lounge. There's a bit more of that detail. There's that massive 1016 kilogram payload. 3384 mass and running order, 2.95 high, 2.35 wide, and that 6.99 meter length. So if you've got any questions about the um, KYOS 80 Technoline, mobile Vesa van, A-Class, then uh, do drop them in the uh, comments below. Always love getting your feedback and your comments and your questions. And so if you want to know anything more about it, either uh, I or certainly the team here at Marquis in Tewkesbury will be able to uh, field any of your questions if you want to know some more about them. I've put some links in the description below uh, to Marquis here at Tewkesbury where you'll be able to have a look online at some of the details and the photos and the gallery uh, if you want to see a bit more of... Uh, of this uh, of this chaos 80 but uh, of course thanks ever so much for watching as always uh, it's lovely to have you along um, lovely to have your comments and your likes do consider subscribing we've still got some more uh, films to come from here at Tewkesbury so check out the channel see if there's any more on there already um, be it the Kias that we've done from here um, but now some of these other A-class mobile vetters um, thanks a lot for watching see you again very soon